Hey guys, it's Jamie here. I decided I'd need a little break from the Dark Cinderella or the Light Cinderella journal, since I seem to be doing both. And I've come back to do this week's international collage prompt, which was National Water of Flower Day. I'm still making the cover for my new art journal, which I'm using craft board for. All I'm doing at the moment is covering up anyone who's watched any of these videos will know the first thing I like to do is take off any plainness on the background by simply adding almost anything I mean quite seriously like that is actually a plain piece of paper but I don't mind because it's different to the existing background this is Mod Podge that I'm using to put it down with I'm putting a coat over the top eventually when I've got it all down. At the moment, I'm just pushing it on. I will use bits of text. It's just anything basically to cover it and take my eye off the fact that I have to be creative. So it can be old book pages. It doesn't matter. It's going to get covered up. It's whatever's available. It doesn't have to have ripped edges. This is all from my scrap box. I've got about four scrap boxes, by the way. These are all from other projects. I don't mind covering these holes up because if I do them layer by layer and cover them up layer by layer, I can still stamp through them and recut them. If I waited until I'd done it all and then tried to stamp through and cut, it might get too thick. So the idea is I just work my way down, overlapping, covering, gluing. I'm going to use some magazines just to add colour to what we've already got here. I'm particularly interested in the turquoisey colour, though I don't mind a bit of the green coming through. And then I want some of these orangey sunset colours, particularly the orange. I may have enough from one page of the magazine. I wouldn't mind some of that golden, so that's really pretty. Okay, I think that's enough. Just trim some of this up actually, so I know where my base is. I'm not going to trim it up properly yet, just a rough cut. These are totally contrast. I want to put them together and I want them to flow so that the colours go this way. It's more orange up here, more blue down here, but with some blue up here and some orange down here. This is just a guess on my part as to what I want to do. Some bits will overlap, other bits we won't. That could overlap with that. Working my way down this. At the moment this is looking a bit symmetrical, but once we get this down, we can add some more random bits in. Let's have a look. At the moment it's a bit too alternating. Let's get a, another overlapping bit here. Maybe a bit more of the blue if I've got some left. Then layer of the gold here. I have no idea what this is going to look like, but we're doing it. Up in this top corner, I'm going to throw some of the goldy colour down. Down in this bottom area, I'm going to go with this brown. Shove a little patch. May have done too much, but it's okay. We will work it out. There. And I have a tiny bit of blue. I may throw up here. The next thing I'm going to do is put a layer of the Mod Podge on it. Now that's dry, the next thing I'm going to do is put over some clear gesso to take some of the shine off this, off these magazine bits. We want this really quite dry so I'm going to use the air gun. We are going to take the white gesso and try to fade some of this in with a bit of dry brushing over bits and pieces of this. We'll also give you a bit of texture as well as create strips of colour on this background. This is something I shall do along all these edges and then I'll come back when the first layer's down and then we'll decide where we go in a little bit heavier 
or not. We've got a rough first layer down and now we're going to go in with a bit of stronger along some of these bits and then take a brush and fade it up and down from the strong bit. A bit of patience is required for this. So we're going through these gappy lines, getting some stronger whites on there tiny bit of paint each time so that we get that fade between the colors dry brush it over and you're starting to see that fade more and more before it dries i want to brush over that Okay, now I need to dry that off before we do anything else. Everything's dry. The next stage for this is I've got the words that Emma gave in the free printable. The watering can I fussy cut out and this I've roughly cut. I'm going to place some things down first. Watering can, want it at an angle. It is water a plant day. Over the top, the Mod Podge as well. I'm not normally one for putting words on things, but I thought as we have them and there's a lot of gaps here, I will put the words down. I believe in tomorrow. I'm just going to have a look a bit at placement. We've got blossom. Sort of make them look a bit like bricks. I'm going to go with that down that side. As before, I'm going to put a layer of the clear gesso over the top. And dry that bit off. As before, we're going to take the fine paintbrush or finish paintbrush and fade this into that background as much as possible. I think that is strong enough. I want to dry that off next. So I'm going to water the plants so to speak by using watercolor crayon and dribbling hopefully some watercolor down the picture going to leave that to dry adding some color and water straight from the watering can spout trying to help it find a direction and strengthen it where it's wet and helping it pour down Strengthening that colour on some of these lines where it's found its own path, but you just want it a bit stronger. And fade it off towards the end. You want that to dry. I'm just going to prop it slightly so it doesn't stream back on itself, but does go down. I have a few things here. I have oil pastels to one side, some felt tips, some markers. I want to bring some of this background out. I'm not sure which is going to be the best way to do it. So I thought I'd start with some brush markers and see what those are like. And I'll start somewhere like here so that if I don't like the effect, it's not an issue. Okay, it's not too bad. So while they're still wet, I'm just using my finger to smudge to hopefully fade it up into the white and make the orange pop a little bit more. Yeah, not too bad. Quite like that. Or do I have like a turquoisey colour? So 
let's get some more of this orange in then. I want to use the black Stabilo and some water and create some lines. Again, I'm going to test the theory before we do it properly. You can see I'm not actually creating bricks, I'm just doing randomish widths of lines that are vaguely geometric. What I'm going to do is dry off everything that's on here now and then play a little bit more, but we're, we're getting there. Taking the Stabilo again, damping it down with these words, I'm going to roughly sketch around them. It's not too damp on here. Okay, I like those words, but, 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 where is my makeup sponge? Just want to try with one of them, sponging round in a bit of grey and see how I feel. Prefer that. Just connect them up a bit to that side. Yeah, I definitely prefer that. I do wonder if I should just do, because I think I should, tiniest bit of grey across some of this over here. Yeah. And now that means if I go around the edge to frame it and fade it in, it's not beginning to really quite like that. To go around the edge, I'm going to use the Stabilo again. Wet. I'll fade it in a minute actually because I do want a strongish frame. Dry that off. All I'm going to do now because I quite like it so far is use a bit of the white oil pastel just to make not all just a few of these whites pop out the tiniest of amount a tiny bit of the orange and then something similar again if I can find a colour that matches this. Honestly, 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 honestly think I'm basically done. Just could do with a slightly whiter look down here. Stop fiddling in a minute. Leave that be, I think. Otherwise, you end up overdoing it. Happy with that. First thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is set it with hairspray. I think that's it for water a plant day. I'm perfectly happy with that. I will re stamp in those holes so that it can be part of a cover for my art journal. If you have enjoyed this video and are watching on YouTube and not in group, please do all the YouTubey things, which is like, share, subscribe, comment, and all the other stuff, because that helps support the YouTube channel. Another way to support the YouTube channel is to take a look in the description of the monthly Creators Club. Lots of people have already joined and roll the credits.